ngelek ngelek telat uh, yang jadi nggak 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 pas ya yeah, nggak pas kurang uh, oh nggak pas oke okay. nggak pas ulang ulang ya ulang ya Telat, ngelek, 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 ngelek. Oke. Siapa sih nih, Ade ya? Halo Ade, ada apa sayang? Internetnya lelet. Gimana maksudnya? Gak jelas, gak jelas. Iya, ada apa? Ada apa dengan internet? Maksudnya kenapa? Ade mau ngirim apa? Kurang jelas, Dek. Oh, sebentar. Ngirim email? Nggak bisa. Kamu pakai nomor yang baru, kan? Oh, kenapa ya? Masih jelek terus? Kemarin kamu udah ganti-ganti berapa kali? Harus harus segera, nggak bisa nunggu. Ya udah ya udah, ada pokoknya kamu uh, usahain sampai bisa. Mama akan coba cara lain atau kamu nanti print ya. Dengerin, kamu jangan panik. Mama segera pulang. Udah, pokoknya kamu gitu dulu ya. Dadah. Ya, beneran, Pak. Harga saham turun lagi, Pak. Wah, bener-bener nih. -bener, saham telekomunikasi turun semua, nggak bisa diandalin operator, Pak. Parah banget, Pak. Hilang duit gue, Pak. Padahal saya butuhnya uangnya besok, Pak. Udah, udah, Pak. Ampun saya, Pak. First, 5G has higher bandwidth compared to 4G, which means more speed. The speed is up to 10 gigabit per second, compared to only 1 gigabit per second in 4G. Second, 5G has lower latency, and the degree is actually in millisecond level, which means very small call delay in real time, as if you're calling in the real time. Last one, 5G could connect more users per kilometer per square, and the commitment is actually 5G to connect 1 million connection per kilometer per square, which means less hassle in music concert or football stadium. Indonesia actually had launched 5G in one of mobile network operator or as short term as Amado. However, the launching was for several cities only and not covering the whole city's area. To develop 5G nationwide is not an easy task. A lot of stakeholders should be involved, such as, of course, the end users, the central government or regulatory, the local government is also important, mobile network operators, of course, the vendors, device manufacturers, other technology players as well, such as IoT, artificial intelligence, AR, VR, robotic players, big data, drone players even, and also the vertical industry should also be involved, application makers, of course, and the content creators, and many others, actually. So one thing that all these stakeholders are afraid of is when this 5G technology is not fly, meaning that those huge investments that has been paid, but no one is actually really used this 5G technology across the country. So it can be said as well that the technology is not sustainable. And of course, the return of the investment is not as expected. So we had 
this kind of bitter experience, for example, with WiMAX. So this research actually offers a 5G technology development framework to be suggested to those stakeholders, the industry players, all those stakeholders players, that we suggest scanner development, a nationwide ecosystem and collaboration initiation, because that is also very important, and of diffusion performance, that is to, to measure how successful we are. And we also can create a simulation, actually, for this diffusion performance. Saat Duta Julu is one of doctoral students at School of Business and Management Institute Technology Bandung. His research focus on management technology, especially in technology development, technology commercialization, technology collaboration, and technology diffusion. He took a study of 5G development. is selected to build the framework. The research involves serial mix methodology of scenario planning and agent-based modeling. This is the attempt to have rigorous result using quantitative and qualitative method. The study involved 38 top management team of telecommunication industry stakeholder with at least 10 years of experience. This selection is based on their capability in strategic decision making and their knowledge in telecommunication industry is required by this research. This study also involved 400 mobile users of survey questions about 5G adoption. Finally, both qualitative and quantitative data are used to build a 5G diffusion model using agent-based modeling. The study offers 5G technology development framework to be promoted to the stakeholders. It includes the country's scenario development, continued with collaboration creation and ecosystem initiation for technology commercialization, and finally measured with diffusion performance. The indicators of diffusion are total numbers of adopters, total revenue, and diffusion time. The first step of 5G technology development framework is to analyze the outlook of Indonesian telecommunication industry through scenario planning. It is a powerful tool to see where we are in 5G development. The scenario planning starts with the exploration of key drivers, why Indonesia needs 5G, and we found that the key drivers are global competition, government and national interests, and user demands, MNO needs, digitalization of vertical industry, evolution ecosystem, economic benefit, solving social problems and technology influence from network vendors. Then the process continued with determination of trends and uncertainties. The two most repetitive uncertainties from the respondents are issue in 5G use cases and infrastructure. Thus, to access analysis, then created using these two uncertainties. From there, we create two scenarios for 5G de development in Indonesia, namely the optimistic champion and the wait and response scenario. The optimistic champion or the winning scenario is the wanted position of this country developing 5G, while the wait and response is our position now in responding mobile network technologies, for example, with 4G. Some examples that are differentiated the two scenarios are one, the optimistic champion scenario, Indonesia responds quickly to implement 5G and more investment come to Indonesia due to the country transformed to tax-savvy country. While in wait and the response scenario, Indonesia is categorized as late adopter and less investment come to Indonesia. The second example, government can leverage the full potential of 5G as we secure the infrastructure, especially spectrum frequency, in timely manner and put 5G as one of the national strategic projects. In the winning scenario, while in the wait and response scenario, we are hardly leverage the country's competitive advantage and the infrastructures are quite late to be developed. The economic benefit is 5G could increase the GDP growth by 0.72%. 2% in the first five years in the optimistic champion scenario, while in the wait and response scenario, the GDP growth will only be around 0.54%. 5G could also solve social problems such as like traffic jam, corruption, and so on in the winning scenario, while in the wait and response scenario, it's only solving several social issues. To reach the optimistic champion scenario, 
Collaboration among all stakeholders is a must in 5G development in Indonesia. Without collaboration, Indonesia might fall into the weight and response scenario all over again. Based on our findings, we found there are room for improvements, for collaboration between the infrastructure, ecosystem stakeholders, such as central government or regulatory, local government, mobile network operators, and incumbent. We proposed 5G stakeholders collaboration model to utilize the infrastructure more, to reduce the uncertainties and unnecessary cost. This research has been presented in front of Ministry of Communication and Informatics, especially in front of 5G Task Force Indonesia. We are glad that SBM ITB could contribute to the needs of the country for this 5G development process. We had a great discussion and conclusion with the Ministry and 5G Task Force Indonesia and plan to continue our support from SBM ITB towards 5G development process or upcoming technologies. In terms of stakeholders' collaboration, we highlight four elements such as MNU sharing, government incentive, local government participation, and co-development and innovation. MNU sharing means sharing passive, active, and network infrastructure between two or more operators to highly utilize the spectrum frequency. We propose two types of spectrum sharing. They are co-primary spectrum sharing, or COPSS, between two or three MNOs and license spectrum access or LSA between MNO and the incumbent. For government incentive, we propose spectrum frequency fee discount as addition to universal service obligation or USO that already been implemented by the government. We propose decentralization policy for the local government to reduce uncertainties from deploying network in the fields. Some of the common challenges in the fields are delayed projects due to incoherent working permits from local government with the project timeline, community fee, and unreadiness of passive infrastructure such as land or electricity. The decentralized policy will ensure the high local government participation as they are required to manage their own ICT infrastructure budget and at the same time build their own areas. The last element is for stakeholders to co-develop the infrastructure. New capital city of Indonesia in Penajem Pasar Utara is one of the best examples of co-development of ICT infrastructure. Co-innovation on the other hand is innovation between stakeholders. Two examples are dynamic spectrum sharing or DSS and also open run. Indigenous co-creation of 5G use cases, applications, and innovation ecosystem should be nurtured in Indonesia for 5G technology commercialization. 5G can no longer be the same with 4G, which more of internet pipe through smartphone. 5G should be the transformation vehicle for vertical industries, for hospital, and also to optimize their operations, smart way of living, for humankind and new revenue stream for the stakeholders and others. Indonesia should leverage the 5G use case coverage such as EMBB, fixed wireless access, smart home office building, telehealth, telemedicine, remote surgery, smart factory, industry 4.0, enhanced teleconference and 3D hologram call, autonomous vehicle, smart grid, smart city, smart government, agriculture 2.0 and aquaculture. For that, ecosystem among technology players such as 5G, IoT, AI, AR, VR, big data, robotic, drone and others should be started. New breed company with new business models such as micro operator, technology solution integrator or partnership with local government are expected to be the solution to the vertical industry's needs such as a factory, plantation, hospital, or any medical facility, school, campuses, and many others.
To buy the agreement from the 5G stakeholders, simulation was run to show the, sim the diffusion performances, such as number of adapters, total revenue generated, and diffusion time. Two scenarios, which are the optimistic champion and the weight and response scenario, were simulated in the model of 5G diffusion of three competing MNOs for people and industry subscribers. The result was the diffusion time is 34% faster in the optimistic champion scenario compared to the weight and response scenario. The graphics also show that the big chunks of total revenue are coming early in the optimistic champion scenario, which means better return of investment and cash flow. In conclusion, we propose scenario-based assessment to know where we are, collaboration in infrastructure stakeholders, indigenous use cases, application and innovation ecosystem for commercialization and diffusion performance measurement to show the update of development throughout all stakeholders.